Hey guys, back with another episode of Tarot Talks. Today we're covering the Moon 18. Um, let's just get right into it. So we're talking about motherhood, the fourth house in astrology, which is ruled by Cancer, um, domicile, your mother, motherhood, <laughs> and the subconscious. So let's start with the fourth house so anything any planet or anything that's going to be sitting in the fourth house of your astrological chart is going to be ruled by how you act because of the way that you were brought up so if we're not specifically talking about your mother we could be talking about subconscious patterns and things like that so we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of it um the moon is always connected to the goddess you have the essence of the full belly uh, being um, full with birth fluids and things like that. A lot of those birthing fluids and that fluidity of water is going to also be connected to the high priestess who is also connected to cancer as well. And she's also ruled by the moon. Cancers are very, very psychic people. I actually have a best friend who's a cancer and she's like, I'm very intuitive and I have weird psychic things that happen to me. I can't control it, but she's like on some other shit. Uh, just very naturally too. She's not even into the occult or anything like that. Um, so numerology in numerology, you have the the this is the one and the eight, which makes nine if you add it together. But still, standalone eighteen has its own vibration. But the root number is nine, which is the hermit, who is also Virgo, the mother of the zodiac. Okay, so here we have the inward theme, which is. For me, what stands out the most with the moon is the subconscious and exploring the subconscious and going inward. That's what the hermit does. He goes inward and explores the world through himself, through his feelings, through his emotions. Um, he analyzes his entire life and why he has reacted the way he has. And that's a whole look into the programming and the subconscious mind. Okay. Um, and then... 18 we'll get to that in a little bit when we get into the numerology section um so let's talk about the subconscious for a little bit what exactly is it so when we talk about the subconscious we're talking about the program that's running behind the program when they say children are sponges well we're sponges but what is actually soaking up that information it's the program that's soaking up the information so when you're very little depending on the environment you're raised in you're going, you're going to process stimuli, things that get a reaction out of you. And it's how you figure out if this is going to be safe, if you're going to have to defend yourself. All those things come from subconscious programming. So if you were raised in a negative environment, you're going to see a lot of negative patterns throughout your life unless you go inward and study that. And that's what the hermit's about. And if you had a positive upbringing and a lot of positive stimuli and just normalcy and things like that you're going to be prone to having a better life and you're going to be less susceptible to having to be like why is this happening to me again why me why is my life fucked that's what the moon card is trying to tell you a lot of times is to go inward now the moon has many faces and um, when you see the symbol of the moon it's basically a glyph or a sigil or a picture that holds a ton of knowledge a lot of these things are like textbooks, like the ancient Egypt hieroglyphs, like one picture is representative of a theme, but it has a whole bunch of themes related to it. So any card in the major arcana, you're going to have to figure out what face you're talking about by the other cards that are surrounded by it. That makes it a little bit easier. I know um, a lot of people have a hard time with the major arcana cards because they're just, I don't know. I feel like the, the minor arcana cards, they have more of a personal story, of a human story. Whereas the other ones, you're just like, what is this? A picture of them. What does it mean? It's like just one person or, you know, some thing with a whole bunch of pictures behind it that you're like, I don't even, I can't even connect it. So they're, for me, they were hard, the major arcana cards. And I learned eventually you have to figure out what face you're talking about of the card by the cards around it because the cards around it are the story cards. They're the ones that tell the story. All right. So that's the subconscious. Um, you're also going to like look at this card 
in a sense of talking about motherhood if you get it along with a female card um like the high priestess or definitely the empress the empress is motherhood in itself um the empress is pregnant but she's more instead of being more focused on the full belly like the moon she's focused on the actual act of bringing it out into the world She's sitting in the garden, which is like a physical representation of the seed. So she's more of like the action of bringing things out into the world. Or any card in the minor arcana that's ruled by Venus, like Venus in something. If you get one of those cards, like there should be three of them, I think. Three or four of them. Um, if you get any of those Venus cards with this card, you're going to be talking about motherhood. If you get this card with swords cards and other feminine cards, like, like, um, say, say if you get like a, a three of swords and then you get the moon and then you get the empress, you might have somebody who had a, had lost a baby. Um, so swords would relate to health within this and, 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 um, female problems if you get the swords, cause they're going to be health and law. And then, um, let me think what else, what other ways would you read this? And we could, we could be talking about your mother as well, just depending on what the circumstances of the reason why you're getting the reading is, I guess. So that's just, a, I think what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to take some cards and show you the different faces of like a, a major arcana card and then show you what frame you should read it in depending on the other cards around it. I think those would make really good content for videos. Okay, pillar imagery. All right, this is good. So in the moon card, we have a picture of stuff happening on the other side of the pillars. And what I mean from the other side of the pillars is this. She's not outside. She's actually inside. The outside's back there. And then you, you go through the pomegranate garden where things are, are being made and you, you're going to meet your maker. She's very much not in this world. Um, that's why I say she's not on our side of the pillars. I feel like you see representations of her on our side of the pillars in the queens of the tarot. You don't see pillars. You, they're outside. They're in the physical world. She's more in the watery world. And we show the seeds of creation behind her. So when I say like things are happening on the other side of the pillars, you go through the pillars, you walk through the field of creation, and you meet the empress. I mean the high priestess. Sorry, high priestess. Okay, so she's very much in through the veil on the other side of the world. So you're seeing a picture on the other side of what's going on on the other side here. And anytime we're talking about beyond the veil, we talk about things in the subconscious, things in the in dreams, um, psychosis, lunacy, all of that is definitely linked to this card. So here's another scene that's being portrayed beyond the pillars because it's death. So we're beyond the veil. And if you see the pillars over here, okay, and we have the sun shining in the physical world on the other side of the pillars, right? All right, so, um, and the moon on this side is on the inside of the pillars because we're talking about going inward, going across the veil into some other place where things are created. Um, and again, if you're, if you're talking about the subconscious, you're going to talk about why are these things being created? What was, what was the story that you were told that made you believe that things should be happening this way? And, and therefore that's the way things should be happening. Very, very deep, very deep themes. Um, so when we're talking about deep, here's, here's another thing. We have things coming to the surface with the full moon. That's also what this card is related to like um, having these revelations. So the lobster is a bottom feeder and it's coming out of the water for some reason onto the land, onto an illuminated path. So this could be the dark things that happen to you are illuminating the reasons why you're doing the things that you're doing. So we have the lobster who lives on the bottom coming to the top. So that's the symbolism in this card for that particular part. Then we have the domesticated dog and the feral wolf. So this goes to, um, I think it's Native American mythology about 
the grandfather telling or the elder telling the boy about how he as well as humanity has a war going on inside him between two wolves who are always fighting and the boy asks well who wins who wins the war and he says it's the one that you feed so we're talking about the dark and light sides of yourself now the mind fuck here is that the domesticated dog is on the side of the dark and the feral dog is on the side of the light and this is actually what's occulted because in the physical world we're taught to basically live in a manner where we have a sense that everything's not enough so we need more we need more you know we get it's like when you feed a dog they'll never stop eating because they don't they have that sense of like fight or flight that just that survival instinct we're basically in survival mode in this world and when we go into the other realm and we learn about darkness that's where we come we become so spiritual because we we acknowledge our darkness and we learn to appreciate it so our darkness needs to be fed as much as our lightness needs to be fed so that's kind of like what's occulted here because you would be like, oh, you would think the dog that's associated with darkness would be the feral one. Now, when we also talk about subconscious and programming, we have all of our wild instincts kind of beat out of us and we're, we're learned to be like domesticated, right? Is that dark or is that light? Right? That's That's the question. But for me, I feel like the wildness and the darkness that we're talking about, if we associate wildness and darkness, like wildness with the darkness, would be just that connection to the moon and to the darkness and wanting to bask in it and not be afraid of it and be connected to it. Um, I feel like that's what wildness to me. People who are like wild children and gypsies and things like that, they're, they're just... They don't live in this mode, in the survival mode. They're just like, whatever, it's it'll work out. Everything's going to, you know, the earth will provide basically. And I feel like that's the essence of what that wild spirit is. And that is what's occulted for me. That's what I see when I look at all these themes and try and put them together and think of how society has like beat the beat your wild nature out of you. But instead you still become a beast. Um, but it's a beast of a different nature and that's why we have a dog and a wolf. Okay. So now we have numerology. We'll tell you, uh, my numerology key tells you that the moon is always a negative card, but I feel like the dark cards are the actual dark cards. This card is not dark. You see the blue sky behind it. Um, even in death, death is gray though. Death isn't blue. But it's still not dark. It's in the middle. It's in between. So you have to also think about what they were trying to say when they were painting the pictures of these cards. Why wasn't it painted dark? Because when you give your attention to your darkness, that's where you become disciplined. Okay. When you study the occult, it's um, mentally, it's very much like when you study a martial art, how people who do martial arts understand that they can kill somebody in a drop of a dime in the easiest way. And they respect that and they understand that. And that's understanding your darkness. And that's how you become humble. Okay. If you give too much to this guy, you become the animal. And nobody ever really thinks about it that way. They think if you give too much to the guy in the darkness, that you become the animal. Note that I have my, my dark obsidian here and my quartz crystal here. For a reason right okay so my numerology key um, relates this card with negativity and I, I necessarily don't think it's negative I think when when we're going into this here what I'm about to talk about if I see it inverted if I see this card inverted I'm going to talk about treachery um, nightmares um, deception deceiving yourself um, let's see Things like that. That's that's where I'm going to talk about negative themes. Um, because they talk about the inner struggle, the one and the eight together makes its own number. But again, it's connected to the nine, like I said in the beginning, because one plus eight makes nine. 
But when you get to the teens, like I said before in previous videos, you're experienced. You're, you're the one coming back to itself. So basically, when you're born, you have all the knowledge and everything in the world. And then it kind of gets taken away from you from programming. And then in the sense of numerology, when you reach the cycle of, when you get to the cycle of ten, nine, the completed number, you're back to 10, one plus zero. So you are illumined, you have experience behind you, and then you're going to go and experience those numbers again on that path, but as a high, more higher enlightened being. So you, the one, and then you have the eight, which is the power number. So they talk about the inner struggle which is the power struggle between themes within yourself. You might be battling dark and light within yourself and going through that at the time that you're seeking the reading and get this card. And again, the two wolves, the inner struggle. Um, let's see. I think that's it. I think we really covered everything that I could possibly think of with the moon. Um, the only thing that I really haven't come across is the reason for the little fluttery guys here. Um, and the, also the reason why you're seeing something that looks like the sun and the moon together is just because it's telling you that the moon is a, is basically connected to the sun. It, it absorbs all of the sun's light and then reflects it back. And that's what you might be seeing in these little fluttery guys here. Okay, so I'm going to try not to go as long between the next card. I'm sorry it took a while. I'm just really busy and life's hectic and, you know, priorities. So... I also want to thank my new subscribers. There were six new this month. I'm still a little guy here. So hopefully you guys are getting some good information out of these videos and you're learning stuff and telling people. And I thank you again. And I'll try and get in the sun video out to you guys as soon as possible. Have a great day.